Welcome back to another edition of TEC Tube. Today we're going to talk about setting up a ERV system for communication ability with an infinity, evolution, or ion type control. Now those systems can only work with certain ERVs or HRVs. They have to be the communicating style, which means performance series, preferred series. It won't work with any of the entry level units and it will not work with any third party units that are not part of the Carrier Bryant ICP series. So these guys all have a four wire communicating cable on them. It is different than the ABCD cable that we've talked about in other videos of this series. This is a different communication specific to the ERV. That guy is gonna wire over to one of these NIM cards. Now, if you, have an, if you have a zoning panel, you can use that instead of the NIM card. But if you don't have a zoning panel, like we do not today, then you need this NIM card so we can communicate to the ERV. And then he has the ABCD communication cable on the other side of the card. So that can interface with the thermostat, furnace, AC, and all that good stuff. Now we're gonna go through how to set that card up from a wiring standpoint, and then we'll talk about how to set up the ERV on the thermostat as well. All right, we got the cover off of our NIM card. There's a little wiring diagram on here. This NIM card has a couple different functions in life. Over here on the bottom side is the wiring if you're gonna control a non-communicating outdoor piece of equipment, which we're not doing today. Right above that is the four terminals that go over to our ERV. So those are wired up, color coding matching, obviously. And then here on the right hand side is our ABCD cable. And that's wiring over to our furnace, our thermostat, and our condensing unit. There are a couple status lights on here. They're green and yellow. If they're both lit, that means everything is working correctly. The green light is communication for ABCD. And then the status light yellow, if it's flashing, you'd count the flashes to see what your error code was. Let's move over to set up the thermostat now. We are in the advanced setup screens of the thermostat. We're going to go down to the setup section and then we're going to scroll down to accessories and the ventilator. There's only one thing to configure on here and it's the reminder timer for cleaning and changing the filter on the ERV itself. Separate from your equipment ER, uh, filter, you have a small filter to protect the inlet air on the ERV and you can just set that for whatever you need. 60, up to 180 days. The default's 90. All right, after you see it the first time or two, then you know how often you gotta do it. And you can save that setting. Everything else for the ERV, believe it or not, is actually set up under the homeowner side of the equation. They are configuring it, or you're doing it for them. So, on the main screen, I'll come back out for you, main screen, comfort profiles, and then where it says humidity and fresh air profiles. The fresh air profiles is the ventilator, is the ERV. You can have the one set up for all of the various versions of being home and then away. And there's a separate one for vacation for like snowbirds and stuff like that. So we'll just go under one of these ones. We'll go under the home one for now. We have our normal humidity setups that we always have available to us. And then below that we have heating fresh air and cooling fresh air. You can set up the airflow of the ventilator of the ERV separately for heating and cooling mode. We'll look at heating. Here's my choices. Off, don't use the ERV. You can do that, that's an option. I don't know why you bought it, but you could do it. You can have auto or you can have manual. If you hit the little info button and read about it, the auto button will tell you there on what it's going to do. And if you read on here, when it is cold outside, the fresh air is reduced. Now remember, I'm in the heating mode. And if I go to the cooling mode and read about it for auto, now it'll say when it's hot outside, the fresh air is reduced. Those reduction levels happen at zero degrees and below and 100 degrees and up. So if it gets really crazy and extreme, it'll shut off the ERV because you're well beyond the normal design days of your system. So we don't need to bring out any extra air in to deal with that. But normally it'd be operating. Manual has a lot of choices to it. So my choices for manual for either heating or cooling scenario are high, meaning full airflow of the device. Now that ERV is a two speed ERV. So there's a, there's a low and there's a high speed available to it. So my choices are running it high all the time. I could run it low all the time. And in between there, there's one called medium. That means it's gonna run on low half of the hour and run on high half the hour. Why would you do that? Well, if you're trying to get to a specific CFM for code reasons or something like that, specific amount of fresh air you have to bring in either every hour or every four hours, you might do that just to help kind of get the exact right amount. So I got high, medium, which cycles between low and high, low 100% of the time. Then I have some that are even below that. So if my ERV doesn't need to run in low airflow all the time to meet code, I might even need less. So I can run low 75% of the time, off for the other 
So that means low for 45 minutes, off for 15. 50-50, so on for 30 minutes, off for 30 minutes. Or I can run low 25% of the time, which means low speed for 15 minutes, off for 45 minutes out of the hour. You can configure them any one of those ways. And then obviously you can do the same thing for the away and vacation. Now for away, I'd probably put it as off because no one's there by definition during away, nobody's there. So why are you bringing fresh air and there's nobody to ventilate for? So normally you'd have away be off, vacation be off for both heating and cooling. And then you would choose the amount of airflow you need either for code reasons or indoor air quality reasons. And that's pretty much how you set this thing up. It's not overly complicated. And a lot of the settings are on the user side so they can change their airflow as they need to. This is part of an ongoing series we have on the communicating thermostats. You can click over in the box on the side here and watch the rest of the series. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.